Enter his courts with praise. Enter his courts with praise. Let us rejoice and bless him. Let us rejoice and bless him. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. For the Lord is strong and mighty. For the Lord is strong and mighty. Worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Let us rejoice and bless him. Let us rejoice and bless him. Bless his holy name. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Let us rejoice and bless him. Bless his holy name. For the Lord is strong and mighty. Worthy to be praised. Let us rejoice and bless him. Bless his holy name. Bless him. For the Lord is good. Worship and bless him. We come to worship the Lord. We come to magnify his name. We come to worship and bless his holy name. To worship, we come to worship, we come to worship. We come to magnify his name. We come to worship and bless his holy name. We come to worship. We come We come to magnify. We come to magnify the Lord on today. We come to glorify the Lord. We come to glorify. We come to glorify the Lord. We come to glorify. We come to lift the Lord on today. We come to lift him. Lift those hands in the sanctuary. We come to lift God for his goodness and for his mercy. We come to lift the Lord. We come to lift him. We come to lift the Lord. We come to lift him. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. God is awesome. He is all knowing. He is all powerful. We come to lift him. 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 We come to lift the Lord. We come to lift him. 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 We come to worship. We come to worship. We come to magnify his name. We come to worship and bless his holy name. Amen, amen. Our collective reading, which is found in your bulletin. Our collective reading comes from Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse, ending at the 11th verse. I'll read the first. You'll read the second verse, the last verse. We will read collectively. To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heavens. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. A time to rent, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak.
What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? Let us read. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. The word of the Lord he is already blessed. Praise the Lord, church. You'll find today's hymn song on the back of your program. Oh, how I love Jesus. Do I have any lovers of Jesus this morning? We just sing, oh, how I love him earlier. We're going to do it the old traditional way this morning. Amen. There is a name. There is a name I love to I love to sing.
hope and I pray you're not tired of worshiping the Lord this morning. Because I have news for you this morning. We just get started. Amen. Amen. So this is what I need for you all to do. If you come out to the house of the Lord and worship him, you've come to the right place. So we need for you to put your hands together like this. How many know that we serve a worthy God, a faithful God, a holy God, an awesome God? You don't even have to have rhythm to do this. Come on. We're going to take it up a little bit high, okay? Lord, so holy. Guess what? We're going to take it up a little bit higher and say these words. Lord, so awesome. Lord, so holy. And you're worthy. And we give you the praise. You're, you're awesome. Lord, so holy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Always making the way. Always making the way. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, so awesome. Lord, so holy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Sing it again. Lord, you're awesome. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
morning, Shiloh. We are happy to see you on this beautiful spring day. These are your announcements for today, April the 24th, 2016. To all of our single mothers in the house, mark your calendar for Saturday, May 7th, as Shiloh will host a single mother's brunch. On the 7th, the brunch will begin promptly at 9 a.m. Please register the, for the event beginning today with Reverend Annette Skipper. For your convenience, there is no charge for the event. Do you have a family member that didn't make it to church today or normally only comes out on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter? Be sure to let them know that on May the 15th, they should join us at Shiloh for our family day. Let's make sure our morning worship experience is filled with all of our loved ones. Let me hear you say tonight. tonight. One more time, tonight. tonight. Tonight we'll be right back here at Shiloh for Sunday Night Live. This evening, we will have guest speaker, Pastor Renee Chandler, who will bring the message of Dream Big. We are looking forward to seeing you right here at 6 p.m. What time? 6 p.m. We'll see you tonight. Those are your announcements for today. Thank you, and have a blessed week. Amen. Church, say amen. Amen. Say amen again. Amen. This time, like you're glad to be in church. Amen. And I uh, saw on Facebook this week, I think Tina sent it to me, that um, Father Flager is encouraging churches sometime today, yesterday, today, to get outdoors and to pray because of what's happening in and around our city, the increase in shootings and killings that continue to plague our community and uh, I love Father Flager and appreciate the work that he is doing the consciousness that he has and his desire to keep us focused on what we're supposed to do especially in times like these and if there's anybody that can control this situation and circumstance it's got to be a God I wish I had the answer. And some days I wish that all we had to do was pray. Because surely there's been enough prayer to change the amount of crime and deaths that have been transpiring over the community. And then I woke up this morning, and it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, and sometimes I grab my phone just to see what time it is, and if I can't go back to sleep, I'll play around with it for a little bit, and for some reason, this time I was led to the news, and I found out that between 12 o'clock midnight and 3 o'clock when I woke up, there had already been two murders and, and 12 folks injured by gunshot, and as I read the story, it gave information about the names of the victims, the ages of the victims, and the location of each of those shootings. And I had to pause and thank God that I had made it back home. Amen. 
praise you give when you believe that you're just supposed to show up at church. That's what that sounded like. And that kind of sounded like the praise that you get when you feel like a demonstration of, of solidarity and all of that and, and, and feel the need for us to do that. Um, and, and, and here's the only reason why I don't want to go outside because I want to do something bigger than going outside. I want to, that may not happen today, but I'm asking the Lord to give us a solution and a strategy that takes us beyond just going outside and praying. Uh, and I'm inspired by a young fella in our church that has been engaged in thinking about this problem and this concern for quite some time and he's been gave me a packet a couple of weeks ago just got to our church Kevin stand up real quick <laughs> gave me a packet and uh, and this week I had a chance to to play something that he gave me in the form of a CD and uh, and so just as we prepare to come to the altar uh, I'm just going to play this and want y'all to listen because this is Kevin's desire, God-given desire for the Lord to do something special with his people. Those of you who feel inclined, come on to the altar. Kevin wrote this, y'all.
eternal God, our Father. We come as humble as we know how just to say thank you. Thank you because you've been good. Thank you because you've been kind. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. I'm here on behalf of your people, oh God. Standing before you in the need of prayer. I personally felt the need to kneel right now. Because we as people used to kneel and pray. And we felt like you would hear our prayers even more. I'm down on my knees in pain, oh God. But I know that you are a pain healer. And I know that you can take care of the pain, oh God, today. So I kneel before you in the presence of these people. Saying, touch right now. Touch from the front door to the back door. Touch from the top of the head to the crown of the feet. Touch from the end of the fingers to the end of the toes. Touch from the mind to the heart, oh God. Touch from the fellowship right now. Bless us, oh God. We're in need of your praises. We're in need of you right now. The people are standing, oh God, fearing for some lives that are around them. We put their lives in your hands, oh God. Touch your people right now. Touch the gang members right now. Touch the bullets right now. Keep them away, oh God. Heal right now. Power in your name. Power in prayer. Power in giving you praise. Power in just saying hallelujah. We claim it right now, oh God. We don't come for shape, form, or fashion. But we need you right now. Your people need you, God. Your young folk need you, God. The gang members need you, God. The preachers need you, God. The jail members need you now. The prisoners need you right now. Our seniors need you right now. Touch your people right now. We claim it. We claim it. We claim healing right now. We claim victory right now. In your precious name. In your precious name. Not in my name. Not in pastor's name. Not in nobody else's name. But in your name. Touch right now. In your name we pray. Amen.
kind of hard to come behind, isn't it? That's real hard. That's real hard. Amen. I don't know why my pastor wouldn't got a broken down preacher to preach to y'all, but uh, I guess he didn't, because all he's got these great preachers here, Dr. Hurdle, Dr. Skipper, Dr. McMullen, amen. Hey. Carlton just prayed up a storm. I thought we could just go home. But here I am, here I am, here I am. And I want you to know the devil's been after me. Every time I get ready to preach, you give me a headache. Yeah. Unless I got, I got something to say, huh? I, I want to thank God for all of you here today. And I, if you don't know me, I'm just a friend of the family. And they'll tell you about me later on. Don't worry about me. I'm just the guy that will give you the word this morning. I have some people that I want to acknowledge to get the preliminaries out of the way so we can get to the word. I won't be before you long. Uh, two deacons that go with me wherever I go, and I thank God for them. Uh, deacon Hillary Hayes, stand up there, Deacon. If I, if I tell them where I'm preaching, they say I'm there. He's there to hold the door. He's there to do whatever, and I thank God for him. Senior Deacon, Deacon Heart and Love. You've probably seen him before. Deacon Love, stand up there. Amen. Now, before I ask Deacon, it's all right, Pastor, if he could just come up here and sit because it just makes me feel good to see him. His lovely wife is with him, and they've been married 67, 68 years. Stand up, both of y'all as a couple. Stand up. Stand up, Mr. and Mrs. Love, Deacon and Mrs. Love. 68 years. Shallow family show. It can be done. It can be done. It can be done. You can find the right woman. You can find the right woman. Deacon Love, come on up here, Deacon. I'm going to need you. Just looking at you with that solemn and that great spirit you have. Help me welcome them, Shallow. I know, I know I'm at home with you guys. Whenever, whenever you see them, treat them good. Both of these are good men, amen? They're excellent men, so please honor them as deacons in the church. They've given their life to the church, the body of Christ, amen. Now, as I said, it can be done 68 years with them. Me and Donna was on uh, 25, what, 29? I don't know. I'm working on 68. Stand up, my wife. Stand up, Donna. Stand up. My wife is in the back. She was. She worked all night. She got off about four in the morning. I told him, Pastor has told me to preach. She said, "What?" She ain't gonna be a lounge on Sunday today. I've been called to task. And that's what you are when you're a preacher. You're called to preach, amen? And one time somebody called me to preach, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't go, and I felt sick the whole week. I really felt bad, and I asked God to forgive me. And because I didn't go, and it was my call to preach, and, and, and I just didn't go. But I thank God, I thank God, I thank God, I thank God. Now, now all that's out of the way, and I hope I didn't forget anybody. Y'all pray for me. And I'm going to try to deliver this, what the Lord has given me. Turn me to Jeremiah 17, 12 through 18. <clears throat> Jeremiah 17, 12 through 18. I'll be reading 12 through the 18 verse. And if, if, you, if you don't feel like standing, I understand. I won't be going on. Bruce, I see you out there, buddy. I'm sorry. Bruce Armstead, amen. My members from Pilgrim. Wave your hand there, Bruce. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremiah 17, 12 through 18. Jeremiah 17. Did you find it? Say amen. That was a weak amen. I think people still rattling pages. Amen. At least you guys are lively because the last church I was at, uh, it was like over 95 and they go to sleep by now. I thank God for y'all. Not saying the 95 year olds go to sleep. How old are you, Dick and Love? How old are you now? He's 92. Amen. <laughs> Dick and Love is 92. Amen. He looks good for 92, don't he? All right. Well, look at Miss Love. She the reason. 
If you go by their house, you can get some zucchini bread, some greens, and dress, and all that good stuff. I got a loaf in the freezer I got to go pick up. Jeremiah 17, 12 through 18. You got it? It says here, a glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. This is King James Version. It says, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed. They that depart from thee shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Jeremiah says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. He says, save me and I shall be saved, for thou art my what? Praise. He says, behold, they say unto me, where is the word of the Lord? Now, that's what I'm going to hang my hat. Where is the word of the Lord? Let it, let it come now. He said, as for me, I have hastened from being a pastor. So he said, I'm going to still pastor. He said, I'm going to still do what I got to do. He, he says, to follow thee. Neither have I desired the war for they that knoweth that which come out of my lips was right before thee. So everything you told me to tell them, folk, I'm telling them. I'm going to tell them the truth. He said, but, but, but while I'm doing it, don't be a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. And he was pretty ticked right about now. Because he says right about, he says, let them be confounded that persecute me. But let not me be confounded. Let them be dismayed, but let not me be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. Damn, I was upset. The Lord had a blessing to the reading of his word. Father God, we come before you one more time. Ask you to anoint these lips of clay one more time. Let me speak as an oracle of Christ. Let them see none of me but all of thee and I will be careful to give you the glory and give you the honor and give you the praise and this we ask in our darling son Jesus we say amen, amen, amen and amen now, Jeremiah was ticked, he was upset but see this crucial question is one that comes from the prophecy of Jeremiah, I won't be before you long so you have to worry about going to sleep I've always admired the prophet Jeremiah for his willingness. My headache is leaving if y'all would just help me. And even daring to ask God questions, some of which are the same that perplex my own faith. At times, Jeremiah, Reverend Herdo, was lonely because he told the truth as he saw it. And truth is not always popular. I have found that out. A lot of folk don't, even your own kids don't want to hear the truth times Jeremiah was depressed because the truth that he spoke was against his own people. Hmm? And unlike so many of us, Jeremiah took no delight in being the bearer of bad news. You don't like to get no bad news. But if you just messed up, you just messed up. At times Jeremiah was frustrated because God's word and will seem to move at, at, at a snail's place toward fulfillment. His word appeared to be sometimes just standing still, null and void, wasn't doing nothing, Mike. One of the factors, one of the factors that few of us take into account when we pray and ask God to do certain things or when we receive a revelation of message from the Lord is how long it takes for that vision. How long it takes for that request? How long it takes for that thing that you're working on to be fulfilled? Since all things, since all things come from the Lord, and since we know God has all power and can answer us even before we call, we get all that. We expect God to move right now, and there are times when God does act instantly. In my life, he has acted just like that. However, there are other times when like a seed, growing secretly. Get this, God works through and in the ordinary, slow moving process of nature and history. See, birth, birth, Dr. Roberts, is, is the handiwork of God. For only God can create or make life. So I said again, birth is the handiwork of God. So only God can create or make life. Thus only God has the right to take life. 
God who is powerful enough to create and maintain all this, all life is in the universe is also able to create life instantaneously. Are you with me? However, no birth, no birth have ever been recorded as having come forth in the twinkling of an eye without having gone through a normal process of development and growth in the womb. You just no birth. I've I, I looked at just no birth. Even Jesus, God's only begotten son, was not born the very instant that the angel revealed to Mary. You are blessed and highly, I'm trying to make sense, highly faith. Mary's pregnancy was still full term. Mm. She and Joseph, they had to wait. Wait until the fullness of time before the child was revealed and prophecy was born. So it is with the word of the Lord and answers to prayer in our lives. What I found out, Margaret, is there's often a large span of time between the moment of revelation and the moment of confirmation. I've been thinking on this thing. I've been walking and thinking. I've been praying and thinking. But there's a large span of time between revelation and consummation. Wow. See, Noah, Noah, when I thought about it, received the revelation that God was going to cleanse the earth by water. That he was going to build an ark but before the first rain cloud appeared in the sky and before the first rain drop fell from heaven. He got that. All the while. He had to hear the daily jeering, just unbelieving world that mocked this old man for building a ark in the middle of the desert. Large span of time between revelation and consummation. When they were beyond their childbearing years, Abraham and Sarah were told they would have a son. Your wife at 75 is going to get pregnant. However, in spite of their advanced years, Isaac was still born 25 years later. Large span of time. Making any sense? Between revelation and consummation. All the while, Abraham Ham, and Sarah were wandering nomads in a search of a place called home. Listen, 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 I, I thought about this one too. David, a man after God's own heart. When he was a mere teenager, David was told, you're going to be the king. You're going to be in charge of stuff. At the beginning of his ministry, David, David was haunted. Saul, his buddy was Jonathan, right? Am I right, Bible leaders? That was his buddy. And his buddy was running with him because his daddy was going to kill him. And he, David told his buddy, said, as sure as I live, it ain't but a short step from where your daddy going to drop me dead. A large shadow, span of time between revelation and consummation. At the beginning of his ministry, at the beginning of his ministry, beginning Jeremiah received the message because Judah had long forsaken God. Judah, the chosen people. The one God said, I'm going to introduce my belief, my religion to the world through you, through this nation. They had forsaken. These fools had left God. They said, "You, because of you have forsaken me, you're going to fall in the hands of Babylon. See, God had labored too long in establishing these people to hastily bring judgment upon them. God told them. He reminded them in Exodus 19 and 4. He says, I bore you. I took you out of Egypt. I took you out of bondage. I, I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. The people of God had long abandoned them. They had left their faith. They had a whole series of apostate kings that had come to the throne, a number of prophets, known and unknown, had arisen to warn Judah of her sins. For God declared, enough is just enough. I'm not taking no more. I'm sick of them people. 
So how blessed, and I realize how blessed us that God's word of judgment is not hastily given or fulfilled. For when a number of us presently sit here, including myself, I wouldn't be here. See, we as humans, and I have this tendency to, especially we Christians tend to send people to hell quicker than God. See, 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 there's a lot of folk, if I had the opportunity, I'd send them straight to hell. I'm only human. I'm not perfect. My buddy Humphrey Jr. used to say, if y'all looking for the perfect preacher, y'all shouldn't, don't call me. There's a lot of folk that I would send to hell. I go, you going, you going, you going. But I thank God because I'd probably be the ones that he would send. Because I'm not any better. See, see, listen, I found a story out of Vance Hefner. He's an old preacher. I, I bought a book on Amazon, so I, and, I, and, I, and I sent for it. And he had a lot of quotations in there, a lot of stories that make things simple when you're trying to preach a sermon and get through with it and let everybody go home because everybody goes to sleep. <laughs> he tells this story about an atheist. His name was Robert Ingersoll. And, 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 and the guy didn't believe in God. He was atheist. Of course, he don't believe in nothing, no Jesus, no God, no nothing. He believes in the Big Bang Theory. This fool believes that all of a sudden, just the world just evolved. The star was went over there. The sun went over there. The, everything is just here. We just came here. It was all here. Didn't nobody make this. What a nut. This clown says, after finishing a lecture, He's talking about God to a group of Christian people. He said, listen, I'm going to watch and declare this to the audience. He said, I'm going to give God five minutes to strike me dead. He sat there. Talab. He just sat there. Five minutes, took his watch, looked at his watch. After the audience waited what seemed an eternity, Ingersoll decides to put his watch in his pocket, proving that God doesn't exist. Now, what Hefner says, when this other preacher got a hold of this, Joseph Parker was his name, he, he says, he said he heard about it. He says, did that fool think that he can exhaust the patience of God in five minutes? Do you think you can make God mad in five minutes? When we think about how far and how often we fall short of the glory of God. We should realize how blessed we are that God is patient with our foolishness. However, 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 that's why when they call me to preach, I need to get up and go preach because it says, lest we believe that justice delayed means that justice is non-existent. Justice delayed does not mean justice is not denied. All that we can presume on God's mercy. In 103, Psalm 103, 8 and 9, to bear me out, 103, 8 and 9 says, the psalmist reminds us that the Lord is merciful and he's gracious. Say he's slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. But it says at the end, he will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. Sooner or later, you're going to pay the piper. Oh, help me. I'm almost through, and I mean I'm almost through. See, 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 when judgment comes, it comes as a result of us having refused time after time to repent or obey or heed God's word. Jeremiah, Jeremiah didn't have the patience of but he also didn't have God's eternity. No, he didn't have the patience of God, but see, God is eternal. He's been here before. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning. Come on, am I making any sense? And, and the end, I, I, and listen, he was called, Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet because he was grieved by the wrongdoing of his people and pained because of the message of judgment that he brought. Jeremiah anxiously awaited the vindication of the prophetic word that he had delivered to his people. He started his ministry about 527 B.C. 
I ain't going to get into all that technical stuff that they try to teach me at the Bible Institute while I'm reading books, but just understand, let's figure this number 40 years. 40 years. Jeremiah would preach a consistent message about the coming of God's judgment upon Jerusalem. 40 years. 40 years, Shai. That's a long time to believe and declare anything without seeing it fulfilled. 40 years. It's a long time to predict that something is going to happen without seeing it happen. 40 years. It's a long time to stand by yourself being persecuted at times, mocked at times, misunderstood at times. 40 years. That's a long time to work hard and to do the right thing. That's, that's a long time. Totally being totally disregarded. 40 years. To proclaim an unpopular prophecy or state unpopular message. Jeremiah may be a hero right now. Oh, y'all sing them songs like Jeremiah. I got fire wrapped up in my body. Yeah, you sing them songs now, but Jeremiah, he wasn't no hero then. He, his message was regarded as treasonous by political rulers. The religious leadership looked upon him as an outcast. His family was embarrassed by him. That old fool. Huh? They considered him to be a crackpot. Something was wrong with that man around here talking for 40 years the same sermon. Something's wrong with him. Let us remember, let's remember that greatness and truth often go unrecognized in their own time. See, see great. Look, 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 look. Malcolm X has a larger following in death now than he did in life. They got movies about him and everything else, but it, it wasn't so hard. They shot that man in the ballroom, and everybody had left him. Martin Luther King Jr. True prophetic stature is recognized more easy now than when he lived. King was branded by a, as a communist by white folk. And Uncle Tom, come on now, I'm telling the truth, by black militants. When he lived, he was pelted with stones. Why is that fool coming to Chicago? Why is he coming here to, to stir up all our good Negro? Martin Luther King was not considered what he is now. But greatness and truth. Large spans of time between revelation and consummation. I'm trying to make sense. Hey, listen, listen, listen. Which people, people I looked at when Humphrey Junior died and seen him. We went to every celebration. And I told my family, I said, Humphrey Jr. was a great man. I said, my humble friend was a great greater in death than he was in life. And in and, 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 and same way with the old man, when we went to Liberty and it was a packed house and, and Humphrey preached it, I said, Humphrey Jr. was a great man. Greater in life and, and death than he was in life. But listen, let me tell you something. Jesus himself. Jesus himself. Oh, y'all know where I'm headed. Jesus himself had a much larger following in death than he had in life. Historians of that era do not regard his life work. Ministry or death of those who he directly touched, they don't, they don't archive that. His crucif crucifixion was not a major international or national event. The way y'all celebrate Christmas, that didn't happen when Jesus came. The only stars away in a major, no Huh? They threw him to the side. Greater in death than he was alive. Oh, J. 
Jeremiah, like many before and after him, who stated in the tradition of prophetic truth, was not popular in his day. Why he lived, why he lived, the more acceptable message proclaimed, affirmed by the majority, was that Jerusalem would not fall. That was the one that was proclaimed by the people, everything was going to be all right. We're going to be fine. Don't listen to that crackpot. They told Jeremiah, you've been preaching this gloom and doom stuff for the last 40 years. Thus said the Lord, he says, well, you've been telling what the Lord says. He said, our message has been confirmed despite what you've been preaching Jerusalem. We still stand. We don't care what you've been saying. We still here. Where's the validation, they ask him, of the work of the Lord that you've been claiming? Let it come. Where is the word of the Lord? That's the question we ask sometimes when we, the time is long between promises and fulfillment. I walk the street saying, where is your word, Lord? Where is your word? That's the question we ask when the workers of iniquity and the foes of righteousness seem to have the upper hand. Where is the word of the Lord? That's the question when we feel overwhelmed. Come on now. My, my opposition and obstacles and doubts begin to eat away at us and we trying to figure out what happened with where is your word that's the question it seems our prayers are not being answered are trying to live right we trying to do the right thing where is your word that's the question we ask we see the wicked prospering and scoundrels enjoying peace and justice being denied while the good people suffer. Where is? That's the question I have. Where's your word? I'm standing on the promises that you told me. I wouldn't have did nothing you didn't tell me to do. Where is? I hope this is helping somebody. I try to, I come to help people. I can't do what the other ones do, but I come to help people. Where is? The word of the Lord. Jeremiah received no answer to this question. He didn't receive an answer. Forty years he preached. He didn't get an answer. There had been other times when Jeremiah had questioned God and the Lord spoke to him. However, the prophet received no answer this time. While I was looking for an answer, I might not get an answer this time. I might be lied on. I might be mistreated. And I might not get an answer this time. May not, might not be being, have been treated right, Brother Herman. I might, people might look at me kind of funny. I might, and I'll be looking and asking, where's your word? I won't get the answer. This time, I woke up this morning with a headache. I said, no, I, I can't get no answer. He said, no, not this time. <laughs> Perhaps the message for Jeremiah, for us is that sometimes we have to wait for an answer to the question. Maybe I just got to wait. The scripture tells me, when I ask, where's your word? It says that we've been faithful and have done all we know to do and have done our best. If we have obeyed what we believe to be the word of the Lord, sometimes we just have to wait. See, it's not ours. I hope I'm helping y'all. Because that's my prayer every time I say, just let me help somebody. Not me, I'm all right. 
but I need to help somebody. I messed up a little bit, but can I help somebody? It's not ours to know the time or the season of God's word. It is ours to believe God's word and trust God and keep God's word. Where is the word of the Lord? Just wait. You, you, you'll find out. David said, I've seen a wicked man overhearing and towering like a cedar of Lebanon. Again, I passed by and lo, he was no more. Just wait. You'll find out. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sow. Just wait, you go find out. Just wait, you find out. For the still the vision awaits its time. It hastens to the end. Where is the word of the Lord? He gave it to us in the scripture. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. Just wait. All the scriptures I tried to find where the Lord is telling me, just wait. Whatever you're going through, I saw what you're doing. I saw what you did. And I'm going to bless you anyhow. May the Lord add a blessing to what I gave you this morning. Remember, where is God worried? Just wait. My pastor say, I'm going to open the doors of the church by letter of invitation in the shallow way. Deacons come forth, all of you. Where's your word, Lord? Just wait. Just wait. Don't be impatient. Don't go get a joint. Don't go get nothing to drink. Don't, don't go get, don't, don't do nothing. Don't do nothing stupid. Don't go rob a bit. Just wait. Young ladies, don't give yourself up. Go to school, finish. Do it. Yes. I know you want to go get you something to get you going to ease your nerve, but yes. Anybody, anybody, anybody that want to join a church where we're waiting on the Lord. We're not perfect. We're not, we're not the, the exact perfect church, but we're the body of baptized believers. Believing that God is and he will ever, he will come. He will help us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The highest praise is hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah in this house. I've learned that if you say hallelujah, somebody will come for somebody needs say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty sweet choir. All because of Jesus. All because of him. Because of his unfinished works. All of his works that he did on the cross of Calvary. Sing it with us. Say that again, all because of Jesus. I like that. Go ahead, turn it around, turn it around. That's it. Better help me, Shiloh. Because I'll take that all week. All because of Jesus. Try it. Everybody, sing it in the house. Come on. Just wait, Shiloh. Just wait. Just wait. All.
I've learned just to listen. And one thing I'm learning, if God don't tell you to say something, don't say nothing. Don't add live. I want somebody here to wait on the Lord. Just as I am waiting on him now, just as my wife and my family, and we're waiting on him. But if you don't want to do it now, if you don't want to come down the aisle now, you think it might be too many people looking at you. Any of these ministers that stand here, and my pastor has a policy of everybody is the same. Of course, he's our leader, but everybody is the same. Any of them you can come to, any of these deacons you can come to, and they'll take you in. If you can become part of the body of Christ, and it's a personal thing. I used to think sometime I was messed up, it was a public thing. Brother Jackson, it's a personal thing. It's personal. It has nothing to do with nobody else. Because when things get rough, you're not going to be able to call on nobody else but Jesus. That's why they say, all because say that, of say Jesus. That, say, that, say, that. say it with me. All because of Jesus. We are here. Bless you. Bless you. Give him praise.
Don't shortchange, give him praise. 